Welcome to Capital Report with State Representative Carolyn Lane. I'm your host, Mike Howard. Representative, thanks for coming in for the first uh, installment of Capital Report for the 2010 session. Thank you, thank you. Well, today uh, we're going to uh, spend a lot of our time uh, talking about what's been one of the main issues that you folks have worked on throughout the interim mm -hmm. and at the uh, beginning of the legislative session. And that's finding a way to, to restore general assistance medical care. Right, right. Uh, for those that uh, may have heard what general assistant medical care or GAMC is, why don't you tell folks uh, who uses that program and why it's so vital to the state? Right, as uh, we had um, the most vulnerable people in our society, the, the, the homeless, the, the people that have very, very little income, we found out if they had a medical problem or uh, a mental illness situation that they were going to the emergency wards and that it was costing us a great deal of money to, to, at the hospital level to satisfy that because hospitals can't turn them away. So we had the GAMC program so that we could provide that uh, care at a much more uh, efficient and, and uh, affordable level. And now the idea is to cut them off altogether. And we, the idea from some people is that we can shift them over to Minnesota Care. Right, I believe that's program. what the governor's, uh, right. he's, he uh, vetoed the program uh, last session and now wants to transition them to this Minnesota Care program. But for a lot of reasons, this doesn't, it's not a good fit and it's not right. cost effective. Right, it's not a good fit and it won't work. It'll have a short term. Uh, possibility and then uh, most of the people will not fit into that program very well and also it reduces the funding for that program and then kicks other people off that so it's just a very messy way to do it and, and doesn't work well and so we're trying to restore it we've we've found ways to make the program cheaper basically by having higher fees on hospitals and on health insurance plans and on the doctors to be able to help uh, us do this and having done this now we put this all together cobbled it all together and now it's been vetoed. And so now we have, and yet it passed off the House floor 125 to 9, meaning that people understood across the party lines, they understood the moral choice here, the need for this, and the cost effectiveness of it. And yet, because the governor vetoes it, they're saying that they're not going to override that. And I just have to ask, which is more important, your, your conscience, your moral choice, or your politics? To me, it's as clear as that. Yeah, it is interesting to think that some folks might uh, flip-flop their vote a week later uh, on something so important. And you mentioned that it passed by such a broad uh, majority of votes with Democrats and Republicans. And I think uh, that is born out of the fact that it's the right thing to do on the compassion side, but uh, for hospitals especially and mm -hmm. for taxpayers, it's actually cheaper, right? Right, it is. It is. In fact, we have great concerns that there would be hospitals that would go bankrupt. They just couldn't continue to do these programs. And we don't want to lose our hospitals. That's our basic infrastructure, not just for these people, but for us. It's a silly, silly thing to do, to, to do this on the basis of political motivation and destroy not only the the make worse outcomes for these people, but to have more costs to all of us and to possibly take down some of our hospitals. It is just unbelievable to me. Well, I know that the legislature is still uh, working to, to find a solution, possibly override the governor's veto. Uh, and there is a broad coalition of groups mm -hmm. that are supportive of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had letters from the Catholic bishops and Lutheran bishops. Uh, churches across the board are coming online saying this is a bottom line social justice issue of they're for the least of us uh, supporting that. Um, and even if a person doesn't want to go there, this is a cost. It's going to be a cost on all of us. It's going to raise our costs behind the scenes to every single person in the state. So uh, in the next coming weeks, uh, probably next time we're back, we'll be able to talk a little about hopefully uh, a solution because the clock is ticking on this, right? Right, right. There's a there's a short time where the people will need to be sent letters if they have an address to receive them to uh, make a switch to Minnesota Care. And by law, the governor is supposed. This is supposed to happen fairly soon, and the governor need, needs to send that letter out. Except that he has no authority to do anything that costs more. And what he plans to do costs more. And yet the legislature gives out the money, not the governor. So he, we have sent a letter saying you don't have constitutional authority to send out this letter. Well, we only have a until April 1st, and that's when the program ends, and hopefully there'll be able a solution that, like the one you passed, the Democrats and Republicans right, support. Right, right. Representative, thanks for joining us. This has been Capital Report with State Representative Carolyn Lane.